What up farmers, welcome to part 2 of tips and tricks video. I promised you that if I get 100 likes on my first tips and tricks video I'll make a sequel and here it is. Thank you all so much for support, likes, sharing my videos with your friends and to my subscribers. I really appreciate your activity on this channel. That's why I do it and that's why I'm trying to get better YouTuber every day. I didn't put tips in categories so if you stick with me long enough maybe you find something you like. Now let's cut to the chase with first tip. Some maps like Pine Cove Farm map have seed masters, also liquid and solid fertilizer makers and good way to transport the goods from them is to have auger wagons. Of course it doesn't need to be uh, big as this one. You can keep them close to the field you're working on. That way you can easily bring your fertilizer or seeds and refill your implements just like this. If you don't have those mods which can produce seeds or fertilizer for you, you can also do that by buying pellets and unload them into your auger wagon, that way you're only doing pellet work once. You worked hard and now you're planning to sell some pigs cause they eat like crazy, don't they? Well, before you do that, feed your pigs to the max before selling them. The food isn't wasted after uh, the amount of pigs decreases, it actually goes above 100% internally. So once you're left with fewer pigs, the food will last much longer. You'll see it on this example. Yeah, I'll have enough food for a few weeks now. We all know that you can store your grain in the train silo which has good storage space, but on Goldcrest Valley map and probably some other maps that have this system implemented, you'll need to pay some money on daily basis to store your grain in those silos. Honestly, I didn't notice that while playing on Goldcrest Valley map, but few guys told me that and I believe them. You can check it out yourself and let me know in the comments if you paid your daily fee on maps you play. For example, storing 1000 liters of grain is going to cost you 5 euro per day. That means 100,000 liters is going to cost you 500 euro per day, which is not too much money, but let's call it <laughs> fun fact. Farm Sim 17 has radio stations that you can listen to if you didn't know that. Plenty of players just listen to sounds of their machines. I have nothing against that, but if you didn't know, just activate your radio with number 5 on keyboard and change stations with 4 and 6. I can't play that music for you now, cause copyrights. You can also listen to your music by setting up your music folder in Farm Sim files. In order to do that, you can watch some tutorials on YouTube which explain how to do it in detail. Planting grass will give you more yield than just mowing grass around fields. Yes, when you're starting out it's much cheaper, especially for starting out with few sheep, but for bigger dairy farm operations, owning a field with grass planted on it, it's going to serve you much better cause you can even hire workers to do some of the work for you. After you harvested a field, if you use a sowing machine which fertilizes and cultivates, you can plant oilseed radish and once it shows growing you can use the same sower to plant your crop over it. And you don't need any more separate fertilizing or even a fertilizer spreader or sprayer. You can do all three stages just by having your seeder slash drill work on that field. Okay, when you're leasing equipment, especially big and expensive one, make sure to do it when field or anything else you're using it for is ready for it to do some work. It's not cheap to lease big equipment, but also it can bring you big profit, for example, if you're planning to do only one sugar beet harvest and you have three fields ready for that harvest, it's not smart to buy this machine and leave it under the shed somewhere to drain your money. And when it's done, return your leased equipment as soon as possible because it's not in your best interest 
financially to just lay around. Sugar beets. Winning by big margin gives you best yield and most money per acre, okay? But you need to take into consideration next few things. Like money you need to invest into big equipment to get to a point where you can plant your sugar beet faster, because pretty much all your grain implements like combine headers and all types of seeders have big, bigger working width. Also, do you have enough storage space and big hauling machines to transport all of it? If you have all of that, yeah, try it out later in game when you can afford all of that. I tried working with small sugar beet planting and harvesting equipment, but got bored really quick. It was slow and painful, so leave it for big machines is my tip for you. Try to get the triangular plow, subsoiler mod to allow workers to plow without leaving unplowed wedges. Some of you are avoiding plowing just because you need to fix edges of your fields every single time. That happened to me as well. Uh, well, with plow looking like this, you won't need to do that any longer. As you can see on this example, it works perfectly fine. Some tractors have better or worse turning radius with implements. This can yield either clean or messy edges when you have workers cultivating or seeding with them. So make sure you first save the game and try out uh, your expensive tractor with implements you're buying it for. If you ever tried wrapping bales, you probably didn't find it satisfying, so in order your bale wrapper can do it faster, you need to change its speed by opening your Farm Sim 17 folder, then choose data folder, then vehicles, then trailers and find wrapper you want to edit, then open that uh, XML file in your notepad and change wrapping time to, for example, 5 to 10 seconds. Use front loader and small pellet fork for handling pellets or even bale fork. It works better than pellet fork on your telehandler, which often gets stuck. Believe me, it happened to me on few live streams. It's not fun to handle your pellets with telehandler with mounted pellet fork sometimes. If you don't like transporting goods and drive a lot, in this case slurry, you can set workers to pull it directly from your animal areas, which saves you from either buying it or making tons of trips to fill up the slurry spreader. Rotate, change crops you're growing from time to time, that way you'll balance some prices on market and be able to plant and sell your favorite crop again, for a better price. If you're using pig food mixer for feeding your oink oinks, I would suggest you to put following crops in it. Sugar beet, barley and canola, those crops are going to give you best yield per acre and keep your pigs well fed. And if you want to know a quick and easy water trick, check out my first tips and tricks video for water hydrant trick. Farm Sim 17 players love their animal farms, but sometimes don't even bother putting slurry and especially manure into good use. I would highly recommend using greenhouses. If you have enough space near your pig or dairy farm, you won't have trouble feeding them enough water and manure and profits won't disappoint you. They are great for covering equipment and animals daily costs and can even get you some extra cash at the end of the day.
You can give grass, straw, hay and silage in bale form to feed your cows, even though it doesn't look that good or feel right, sometimes it just saves time. Just like making bedding for your pigs, you can drop your straw bales just like this and your pigs won't mind. And that's it for part 2 of this tips and tricks video, make sure to hit the like button if you found this video helpful in any way, it will help me a lot. You can always share my videos with your friends and comment down below with some questions or suggestions. You can subscribe to my channel by pressing circular icon that just showed up on your screen. Check out my Facebook and Twitter pages, links are in description. Keep having fun and cheers from what up?